Welcome back to another episode of Freedom Finance with Lanny, guys. And today's video is all about dividend investing. After 15 almost years of investing, it's time to show you again the proof in the pudding. So that is why we're going to talk about how 36 different dividend checks were sent my way this November of 2023. We're going to go through each stock, not in detail, but I will touch on a few of the highlights that maybe resonate with you, definitely resonates with me, maybe how long I've held them, what I plan to do with possibly some of those shares. But really, it's all about the dividend income and the passive income technically that I've been able to build up after all of these years. And you could finally see more of the proof from all of those years of investing. So grab your favorite beverage. You know the drill, the coffee, the beer, the whiskey, the wine, the other liquor. You name it, go get it, let's dive in. Again, do a little bit of background. You know, the primary tool that my wife and I, we use to get to financial freedom, or our goal to get there is dividend investing. You know, we love it. It builds up a nice passive income stream. We save anywhere between 60 to 80% of you know, our monthly you know, income, and we pour most of that right back into the dividend investments, dividend stocks, dividend ETFs, you name it. You know, I put out a few videos. One, you could catch it out, uh, check it out. It's where I show you how I screen for undervalued dividend stocks. Hopefully that should help you. And I do talk about many investments here on this channel, such as my three favorite Vanguard ETFs. You know the drill, VYM, VOO, VIG, the dividend trifecta, you betcha. So check that video out as well. And, you know, again, our background here is just heavy into dividend investing to get to financial freedom. For new dividend investors or soon to be hopefully dividend investors, November is a non-quarter end month. So it's not March, it's not June, it's not September, not December. So non-quarter end months typically are a little softer when it comes to dividend income. Why is that? Well, because first off, most companies want to pay on those quarter ends. They, you know, keep it pretty simple and consistent. You know, so your popular, you know, ETFs and dividend stocks, you know, J and J, McDonald's, MCD, uh, you name it. Many companies love to pay on those quarter end months, and majority of the exchange traded funds or ETFs and mutual funds do typically pay on quarter end months. Sometimes that trails and goes into that first week of the next month. Um, as we kind of are used to for us, kind of, uh, I guess, long-term investors here. But just know that November results are typically softer. Now, I got to put a caveat there because after you invest for as long as I have, and hopefully as long as you will or as long as you have, you'll notice that your November and non-quarter end months start to really pick up steam. You start seeing the compounding, one of the magics and wonders of the world right there. And that snowball really starts to take effect. So this November income might be lower than one of my quarter income summaries that I've talked about, but just know that you know it's expected to be softer, but it will continue to build year after year. So 36 different dividend checks came my way. Well, technically I'm not going out to the mailbox, opening up the slot, pulling out a nice envelope with the dividend payment in there. Some I think actually still do or can pay that way, but you know, 20 or you know, 36 different dividend payments hit the brokerage account, and all of those proceeds gets reinvested right back into the shares, catapulting that dividend income forward. So we're not going to talk about every single one, but what we're going to do is go through chunks here on the screen during this video, um, just so you can get a taste and, and feel for what stocks I own, how much they paid me, and a little bit of little bit of Lanny commentary on those stocks. So here is the first screen print right here. And oof, nice. You know, we've got almost a stock here that paid a hundred dividend hundred dollars in dividends, but Verizon was pretty much the closest here at $91.86. 
you know, I own quite a few shares of Verizon. If you do the math on that, uh, you know, with reinvestment and dividend growth on Verizon, there's no question that this amount will more than likely be close to $100 per quarter from Verizon going forward. Another one I highlighted here is John Deere, ticker symbol is DE. The reason why I want to briefly talk about them is I've owned them for a long time. And they're one of the best dividend growth stocks that I think you can hold you know, now and forever. Uh, their dividend growth rate and their profitability is just massive and strong. So you know, if you're new to the investing game, you probably you know, know all about the John Deere tractors out there. So sometimes you, you buy what you know. And uh, yeah, they, they pay a nice dividend and they grow it very handsomely. Um, another stock here that it'd be fun to touch, touch upon is PG or Procter & Gamble. You know, you probably have heard it on the Dividend Diplomats channel, but they're a top five foundation stock because we feel like their brand portfolio is pretty much going to be seen and is evident in almost every single household. Your Crest toothpaste is a pretty easy indicator, not to mention the list and slew of diapers, wipes, you name it, that they also sell out there on the market. Um, you know, toilet paper, paper towels, you name it. Um, you know, razors and all of that as well. So. $69.33 from good old Proctor. Um, not too shabby, not too bad. I know at some point with more years of dividend growth and dividend reinvesting, this will surely hit $100 per quarter, hopefully. You know, last, you know, I do want to talk about here is Hormel, ticker symbol HRL. Um, they've been taking a big slide in stock price. And if you haven't caught me on X or Twitter, or insert name for that social media platform. You know, I've been talking a lot about Hormel. They're a dividend king, so over 50 years of growing dividends, over three and a half to four, almost 4% 4 dividend yield with a pretty solid dividend growth rate, though the last one this year was uh, subpar below, I think, 3%. But they're near 52 week low, so definitely keep your eye out on Hormel. All right, so that was one little list. Let's take a nice snapshot here for the second group of uh, my dividend friends over here. Norfolk Southern, ticker symbol NSC. Obviously, they've had some bad news in 2023 with the derailments of a lot of their trains this year. Um, you know, if you were able to catch them in the 185 to 200 range this year, you probably had a pretty good investment purchase there, uh, in my opinion, obviously. Do your own research. But Norfolk paid me $58.14 this year. I've owned them for a really long time. Um, they traditionally increase their dividend every year. And at some points, they were actually doing it two times a year. So that's why I also wanted to touch upon Norfolk Southern. Ah, the next one. It wouldn't be a weekend morning without that nice smell of coffee in the morning, guys. Or on your daily commute to work and you took look to your left or you look to your right. And you see those long lines at Starbucks. Yes, ticker symbol is SBUX. You know, they paid me $25.27, but my wife also owns them. So they paid her $18.88. And she even owns it in a retirement account that you'll see here. Uh, they paid her almost $45 in that account. So, you know, Starbucks, great stock, you know, great margins, great loyal customer base. I mean, I know people that buy them every single day, sometimes twice a day. There's uh, somebody who I may work with. When I see them holding that cup in the morning, they actually tell me that it's their second cup from there. So um, they have one on the way, and then right before they enter work, they stop at the one close to the office and they pick up another one. So so that's two a day sometimes for people. So that I, I just nod my head knowing that that dividend check seems pretty safe to me. Um, you know, lastly, I do want to talk about United Parcel Services, UPS. They paid the biggest dividend that you'll see here this month, actually, at $159.08. This dividend was paid when I owned a little over 99 shares. Well, guys, this dividend was reinvested, and I finally have crossed 100 shares of United Parcel Services, or UPS. They'll be prob you know, pretty busy and more than likely... Uh, be stopping by your front doors during this holiday season. I know there's some stiff competition with FedEx, Amazon, and USPS, but you know I like the brown truck and I've owned them for a long time. So looking forward to now being able to do maybe a little something more at 100 shares with UPS. Next, we'll just pop up this last little section here. I'm not gonna talk about any individual stock here because a lot of them are bank stocks such as Citizens and Northern, CZNC, 
Norwood Financial, NWFL, HTBK is another bank stock. So I've got some heavy bank stocks and these are all in the retirement account. But we'll put the full picture here. You know, again, I'm showing you all 36 dividend income checks that paid me, you know, in our house this month, you know, $1,561.20, guys, over $1,500 in an off month or the soft month. This didn't happen overnight. This Rome, this Coliseum was not built overnight, everybody. You know, again, almost have been investing for close to 15 years. It'll, I'll hit that next quarter. Um, in the first quarter of 24, it'll be just about 15 years of overall investing. And, you know, this was not built overnight. So this is a lot of consistency, a lot of saving, a lot of investing, obviously, aggressively over the years. But here are my results for November of 2023. So the question is, is how did you guys do? Does this all make sense to you? Do you have any questions related to how I invest, what stocks I own, why I own the stocks? Let me know in those comments below. Let me know as well how you performed in November of 2023. What stocks or what other investments are you looking out for? Appreciate, you know, obviously all the feedback, guys. And let me know what other videos you might want to see here on this channel. I'm all about sharing, hopefully, you know, helping out and describing some topics here for you. So let me know below. If you haven't, like the video, subscribe to my channel, guys. This was Lanny from Freedom Finance, and I will catch you on the next one.